<laughs> so you have me hooked up. Are you able to hear me all right? Okay. Uh, I'm here to represent my dad. I understand that uh, they're kind of thinking a little bit about uh, realizing that my dad made quite a contribution in this area. He'd never be seeking for any, uh, anything in return. But uh, I, I tell you, dad did have a very strong family. And uh, families are very important. If, if a country is going to survive, the family is going to have to do it. Before we start, I'm going to quote a passage of scripture that my dad and mother liked very much. So we've kind of made it uh, a scripture for the corporate correct craft. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. And that was dad. Dad uh, prayed a lot. He spent much time praying. We had every morning, we had prayer. Uh, I want you to know that my family, my father, and all the way back for many years, have been boat builders. Uh, we were boat builders in the 17th century. So being boat builders on the south shore of England, in a little t a town named Portsmouth, England, we started and made our own ship and sailed it across the ocean. We landed in New Hampshire and named the city Portsmouth, New Hampshire. That's why the first Navy Yard is there. It's still a Navy Yard there now, and there's still our family on that Navy Yard. So boat building has been part of the family for many years. My dad uh, decided to come to Florida. He decided to come down here and make money because there was a boom on. But he got there about the time to invest the money and lose it all. The boom busted and all those Yankees went back up north and we were stuck. So Dad had a piece of property in a little town named Pine Castle. And he decided, hey, with all these lakes out here, man, we're boat builders. Why don't I just start building boats? Well, we did. Uh, I can remember uh, the building over here on the corner at the, near Quinton's Dock. Uh, when the tornado came by and blew it flat, uh, they took the, the bricks that was there and made the little bit of building you see there now. And that's when he moved up onto Orange Avenue and started building boats up here. But that's the way Correct Craft uh, got started in the, in the very beginning. It's been a, a, a pleasure to see Dad as he was in action uh, uh, when it was interesting when, when the boom busted and we didn't have any money or anything, uh, what we had to do to get by. Dad was very consistent with working hard and when uh, we uh, had O.G. Hall came to our church, uh, he said, but Mr. Balloon, when you come out of church, you, you shouldn't look over across the street and see if somebody's over there wanting to buy a boat and go over there and sell them a boat on Sunday. Well, we were trying to survive, and Dad felt any time he could sell a boat and survive, well, that was pretty good. But uh, uh, we had an old preacher named Murphy down in Taft, and that old preacher in Murphy uh, started a, a, a growing a tree. It grew up to be quite a large tree. We all used to go down and pray under that tree. We called it Murphy's Oak. And Dad got under conviction in 1935, and he closed the doors on Sunday and never opened the doors on Sunday after that. And it was not easy. It was a struggle. Dad was very instrumental in doing many things. Uh, in the war, we uh, were the only people that built more than 20,000 units for uh, for the government. We built the uh, uh, army boats here. We built the uh, navy boats uh, over in, in Titusville. Uh, this uh, little factory here was not big enough to build uh, boats up to 33 feet, and we did, uh, we did build a, a few 40-foot boats, but uh, not very many. Uh, most of our boats were in the smaller sizes. But uh, I, I, this lady on the front said she used to work with us, and we, had a, we, we never had any ladies working in the boat factory until the war. 
And I tell you, if we didn't have the ladies and the high school people, we'd have had a very difficult time. Uh, even the principal of the high school run the night shift, and they worked four hours. And the kids from the high school would come over and work at night in order to win the war. There was tremendous effort made in this little town here in order to do all these things. But uh, it, it looked like every time they had to have something in a hurry, they'd always come uh, to Dad and say, Mr. Maloon, can you do it? Dad said, well, we'll have to pray about it. Well, the story is here, and you can read it. I've got these up here so you can have a chance to read it and everything. But uh, they came to Dad and they said, we, uh, you've never seen this boat before, but uh, we'd like to have you uh, help us. We've got to have boats across the Rhine River. So they let out four contracts. And when they let out the four contracts, we were the only ones in the south. The rest of them were all in the north. And I want you to know, at that time, they didn't think anybody in the south knew anything. They didn't think we were capable of getting anything done. But, uh, but they didn't know what Pine Castle could do. And uh, so uh, they asked us if we'd get in on it, and, and uh, we did. We, we never had any ladies working at a boat factory until the war. And I tell you, if we didn't have the ladies and the high school people, we'd have had a very difficult time. Uh, even the principal of the high school run the night shift, and they worked four hours. And the kids from the high school would come over and work at night in order to win the war. There was tremendous effort made in this little town here in order to do all these things. With us very well, we went. We worked uh, all but Sunday. Well. They immediately got that and they said, Mr. Maloon, we want you to work on Sunday because we only got a, three weeks to get these boats ready. We want you to get the boats ready. We need the boats. So we want you to do just like the other three companies are doing up north. And we want you to work on Sunday. Well, Dad said, whoa, wait a minute. You told us there was going to have to be a miracle in order to get this done. And they said, yes. Well, we said, God's the only one that does miracles. And so we're going to do it God's way. So we did just like we've been doing, work till midnight Saturday night, go back to work midnight on Sunday night. And we were the only ones of the four that had our boats done three days ahead of time. Because each one was assigned three, they gave us a contract of 1,200. But they wanted 300 from each one of the three, uh, four contractors. We were the only ones that had any boats ready, and we had 305, I think it was, ready three, three days ahead of time. So they came in, and, and the street was blocked off, and, and it happened to be on a Wednesday. And Wednesday is when we always had a special devotional time for our employees. And uh, so we assembled together right in the middle of Orange Avenue, because it wasn't called Orange Avenue in those days, but it is now. And we, we assembled right out there, and, and the pastor got up there, and, and he brought the devotionals. When he got through, he says, we have the colonel here with us from Washington. Maybe he'd like to say a word. So he gets up there in this cutting table that we were cutting the material on. He gets up there, and he says... We are so pleased. I've been to all three of the other contracts, and they don't have any boats. And you've got them all over the place. We're not even getting them out of here. And said, uh, would you take it on and build in the next three days a hundred more boats? Because we, we'd like to have 556 or whatever it was, read the story. But we'll settle for 400 if, if you can just get us 100. Did you know we built 100 boats in two days? We still got done a day early and actually 405 boats. And to God be the glory. And this has been written up, and that is the reason why we're given the Army Navy E.